Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 97 of Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute bite of learning covering tech, coding, and some cool projects that we work on. And the cool project that we're going to talk to you about today is Ansible with uh, my buddy, Quinn. Quinn, do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Quinn Snyder. I'm a senior technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. And uh, to to your point earlier, Kareem, about not being you know covering Ansible again, this is kind of that part two. I know we we dropped a few hints about lots of other things being uh, inside of the repository that I could talk about on, on on the last episode. I was able to nest a lot of things together in a single playbook. So I talked about having. Uh, NTP servers change for both iOS XE and MXOS devices. And I didn't really cover that in depth. Um, so I want to touch on that here. As of Ansible 2.10, uh, we have these new connection methods. And what, what that means is every OS, we've all seen this if we're working on iOS or XE or NXOS or XR, they all expect something a little bit different in order for us to respond to the username and password prompts or, or even the prompt that shows up on that device. So as part of the inventory configuration, we need to make sure that we define that uh, as part of our, our inventory. So under the, the variables for each of these devices, whether it's uh, the NXOS or the iOS XE devices, I have this Ansible network OS variable defined. Now, this tells Ansible not only to use the appropriate connection methods that are defined as part of the collection, but because we've defined it as a variable, we can uh, also use that when we call that in a playbook. And so what I've done is something, it's kind of like the basic hello world. This used to be something really complex on Ansible, but these config modules have made it much easier. Uh, I'm just going to do a configuration backup. So using the config module, we're going to do a backup and we're going to drop it into this directory with this initial configuration. The key point here is I've called this task to only run when the Ansible network OS matches a certain value. So I'm applying this to all hosts that are in my inventory but I'm able to match this and tell Ansible only perform this task with this specific uh, uh, module, in this case, the iOS config, when we match that specific uh, network OS. Because if we try to do the, the, the same thing with the, um, if we were to try to use the oh, iOS config against an NXOS device, it's going to fail because those connection methods are different as it's perceived through, excuse me, through Ansible. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this, uh, just a real simple backup uh, script and if everything is still up and functioning, assuming it hasn't died in the past uh, 10 minutes, we can see that we have this backup path that's created uh, for each of these devices, this 175 and 176. We can see that those things have been changed. And we have, under the backup folder here that was defined as part of my path, we have 175, 6, 7, and 8. Those are just the inventory host names of how I have, to have them defined in the inventory. But if we were using host names or something along those lines, um, they would show up, you know, reflect that appropriately in, in how we've defined them. But I can click on this configuration and see that we, in fact, have a backup of that entire configuration. Um, and it was it worked appropriately because we had that conditional matching. And it only did the XE devices because when you trigger the playbook run, you included that tag just to run the uh, just for those iOS devices, iOS XE devices. Yeah, this this wasn't quite tagging. This was just the conditional matching. So it's it's going to loop or, through sorry, and say, okay, I'm go I apologize. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm going to go through the iOS XE devices in the inventory again. I'm run to complete. So uh, match the inventory, um, match the OS in the inventory, and then perform this config, and then go down to the NXOS devices and say only run this when that Ansible uh, network OS variable is defined to be NXOS, and then gather those configurations. Why didn't you put a conditional on the on the actual config so you can just use one one block? So like if it's iOS XE, then this is the config you use. If it's NXOS, this is the config you use in one as opposed to breaking them out like this. I've broken these up into two separate tasks so that people who are are, are learning how to use Ansible, we uh, can say but you that, could have done it in these one two task, things essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do that in one task. We could make it much more complex and do all kinds of ifs and thens and whens. But um, I, I, I use this repository and, and and go through this talk and and usually add a disclaimer like this is not the most concise way of doing things. This isn't the the hundred percent best practice. This is kind of that illustrative point to see here's what's possible in an illustrative way uh, to do that. And so we've got that that conditional that's just matching that specific OS for that type um, to make. 
excuse me, to make sure that we don't have that, um, we don't have any confusion. And sometimes simple is better than, than uh, you know, a complex one-liner. Now, one of the other things that I didn't touch on a whole lot, uh, or we didn't actually have a whole lot of time to get into, was, was how complex we can really make our tags. Um, and I want to just do a real quick kind of deep dive, and this may get a little uh, like Inception or meta, but, but bear with me on this. And I know that this, if, if you have the repository open, uh, if you're watching this episode later on, it'll make a lot more sense than me just randomly clicking through things. Um, so I have this, this, this role, and a role within Ansible is kind of like this larger automation. Um, and so I can define these tasks uh, at a high level and say, call the specific role, and this role can have lots of conditional actions, to your point, uh, uh, Kareem. So we can have all different uh, kinds of ways we nest through these things. But I have this playbook called 50 Roles, which calls this network compliance role. In that role, we have these three tasks. We have this main.yaml, we have an iOS XC, and we have an NXOS. If I dive into this main.yaml, uh, we can see that we only have two main tasks. And what this says is that we're going to include tasks from this iOS XC or NXOS.yaml, and I've aligned those to be the OS names. But I have multiple tags defined for each of these um, uh, kind of high-level calls. So I have one that would affect only iOS XE devices, one that I've called compliance, which is all devices for all configuration. And then I have some specific items that I'm going to be changing on these devices or could change if I chose to, logging, users, uh, clock. But we, we also, if, you, if we go down to the NXOS, we have similar tags as well. We have one that would affect only the NXOS devices. We have one that is compliance, again, for all of those devices. And then we have logging, users, clock, time, and domain that we would, may want to change Maybe we have to rotate users, or I can think of like SNMP tags, or maybe we've changed logging servers. We just want to be able to change that one item across our entire fleet of devices so we can call those individually. Now, I'll dive into the nxos.yaml here, and we can see that this is the, 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 the after we have that tag, it'll be called by that main.yaml. And we, this is very similar to how we, we talked about tags in our, our last episode. We have logging configuration changes. But you can see that I've got multiple tags here. So depending on what tag I call, main the, the, the role YAML will call main YAML, and then main YAML, depending on what tags are applied, will call the subsequent, uh, including uh, you know, iOS XE or NXOS.YAML, and then we'll find that specific tag to apply. So again, we want all changes to happen on the NXOS devices. We want all changes to happen if we call compliance tag, but if we only want to change logging, then we're only going to call the logging tag, and it will affect both the iOS XE and the NXOS devices, again, depending on what tag we call from the command line. And we can see we've got users, we have uh, the cop changes for, for daylight saving time, NTP, uh, and then uh, domain names for those specific devices. So we can change any of these things. We can nest them appropriately. As long as we tag them out, uh, we, can, we can call them from the CLI and, and affect change on one piece of configuration across the entire fleet or change the entire fleet or only one OS type or sky's the limit, however you want to apply your own tags. I can see so much opportunity for people with um, OCD to like nest, nest, nest. You can you can get yourself into a, a hole of um, configuration. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Kareem? Configuration. Um, there could be lots of sprawl, part, tag sprawl. Sp yeah, tag yeah. sprawl. But, I, you know, that uh, that I think is probably a a caveat to all of this, right, is to make sure that within your organization that you're being conscientious about the fact that some things don't need to be atomized uh, within within this space. And even though it's a very powerful opportunity, it's also um, a, an opportunity for you to, to think about overthinking, I, I think is where I'm trying to go with this thought. Quinn is champion of overthinking. Can you imagine what <laughs> if we have him build something like this in production? <laughs> I know, right? Um, <laughs> you're, you're seeing a few hours of this already. Um, and, and to that point, Matt, um, you know, it, it goes to one of those things that we've always talked about. Automation doesn't solve the business process. It doesn't solve, solve operational challenges. It solves toil, but you still need to have some, some compliance and some rigor and discipline around how you define all these things to make sure you don't get sprawl, you don't itemize everything that doesn't need to be there. We include things where it makes sense. We don't include them where it doesn't make sense. Um, so you still have to have automation and programmability does not fix bad processes. So you have to have good processes. In fact, even more so because automation can, 
expand your blast radius very quickly. I mean, this is a similar thing that we see in software development in general. So, I mean, now we're, because we're offering all of these opportunities uh, within Ansible that necessarily hadn't always been there, you were kind of uh, given a lot of guide, guide rails in, the, in previous instances of Ansible. Um, and now we're seeing more and more elements being added to it that are make it a little bit closer to a programming language. And in those instances, um, you know, the blank slate isn't always a, a good friend sometimes. And so, um, you know, even though these are very cool things that we're looking at, the concepts themselves um, need to be within a, a good process. That's that's an excellent point, Quinn. Yeah, but yeah. Quinn, I thanks for coming on again, man. This is this has been very informative. I know a lot of our snipers probably want to get hands on with this content and everything that you've shared here and we'll we'll make sure to share a link uh with this video and check out episode 92 to get the kind of the beginning of all of this uh, but um this is kind of all the time we have good to have you on quinn and snackers thank you for your time thanks snackers <laughs>